Good morning, church. Good morning, Tabernacle of Worship. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's nice to be called. <laughs> Amen. 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 God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. I thought that's for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. How are all of you doing this morning? Good? Good. End of school holiday? Everybody say? <laughs> yeah. You know, glad to see some of you back from holidays and some are still trying to come back, you know, and... Uh, it's going to be a great, great year. Amen? Amen? We have just moved into our new emphasis for the month of uh, June, Be Victorious. So I will preach this message, then I'll leave you all for a few weeks, then I'll be back end of the month. But we have uh, three great preachers that are going to come and minister God's Word. One of them is Reverend uh, Kevin Sim from Melbourne, Australia, going to come next week to preach in our Chinese service and then in our English service. And then the following week, uh, in the Chinese service, we have Pastor uh, Josin to preach the word. And on Sunday, we have Pastor Kendrick Kong to preach the word. Hey, don't, don't go woo too much. You're giving him a lot of pressure. Okay? And then uh, the following week, you know, we will be back on a Friday. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, we have Pastor Shirley Tan, who is a missionary, Malaysian missionary to Hong Kong for many years. She's back now in Malaysia, and she will minister God's Word in our Chinese service and also our English service. Amen. Today, give me your ear. Everybody say yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't cut it off, okay? I want to share with you concerning victory or survival. Victory or survival. All right, and I want to read Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Can I have the timer, please? Victory or survivor? All right. Galatians 6, verses 1 to 5. It goes this way. Everybody read with me, can I? If not, sometimes I feel very lonely reading the scripture up here alone. Okay. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit shall restore the person gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Father, we look to you today in your word and we pray that you speak to us. Help us to understand your word <clears throat> so that our lives may be blessed, may be enlightened, and be expanded. This we pray in Jesus' name. You know, when it comes to lives, for many, it is a non-issue. For some, it's a bliss. Yet still for many, it's a struggle. Am I right? Hello? Yeah. When it comes to the matter of living in this life, but I know that life itself is a matter of survival. Whether we like it or not, uh, life itself is a matter of survival. Things do go wrong for us in life. No matter who we are, some things do go wrong. Consequently, lives sometimes become more of a battle than survival, for survival than winning. Sometimes we find out life is somehow more of a survival than living blissfully. Believe me, you know, I am not happy about all this. I think all of us are not happy, you know, and uh, things do go wrong in life. And for one reason or another, marriages fall apart. Husband and wife has misunderstanding. Babies are born with defects. Children go wild. We lose jobs. Cars break down. And so do our bodies. People die. How many of you come across some certain juncture of your life 
You realize your car break down, have problem. Your fridge has problem almost at the same time. And then after that, you realize that the oven that you have also break down. How many have experienced that before? Come on. Not only myself alone, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes when I send my uh, uh, fridge for repair, and I come and say, oh, at least it's done. The next thing I realize, something else rocks up and something else gone haywire. And somehow or I land up to fix a number of things in life. You know, life is like that. Life is like that. You know, we are not happy with it. Sometimes things that happen in our lives. But then the question is this. What can we, how can we survive the problems and the pitfalls of this life? As Christians, how? There are three, three different areas of help for the problem we face in this life in order to survive. You know, there are three areas of help. I want to share with you today very quickly. One, help from within. Help from within. Galatians 6 verse 5, it says, For each one should carry his own load. It is very important we need to learn to take note of this. It's so easy when we have a problem in our family, when we have a problem in our marriages, we have a problem in our career, we have a problem in our, our businesses and education. We tend to blame someone else for our problem. We tend to put our finger and point our finger at someone. It's because of you. It's because of a mistake you make. Husband and wife, if they are misunderstanding over certain situations in life, it's not because of him and not because of her. It's because it does happen. Hello? It does happen. Yeah, we all make mistakes in life. But we are not to blame one another. We are to take responsibility over the problem that we face. The King James Version put it this way. For every man, every man shall bear his own burden. The idea of Galatians 6 verses 1 to 5 is that of bearing one another's burden. But Paul is also saying that there are some burdens that only we can bear. We have to learn to stand up like a man, like a woman. Amen? We have to learn to rise up to our situation. Raising kids today can be very difficult, can be very burdensome. You know, in those days, when I look at my mom and my grandparents, you know, in the road, they, we, 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 I grew up in a, a, in a jungle, not the jungle, in a rubber estate. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a rubber estate, all right? We stay in a kampong in the, the rubber estate where it is now today called Taman Desa. You know Taman Desa, Old Klang Road? Last time the whole area is actually a rubber estate. I lived inside. You know, we have, there are three villages inside actually. You know, I saw the, the cutting down of the trees and the houses removed and, and the construction of Taman Desa. And in those days when we were growing up, children, their playground is the rubber estate. Yeah. You know, and today you put them in the rubber estate, the mothers and the, and, and, and the dad, dads will tell you, don't play inside. Very dangerous. There are spiders. There are, uh, there are uh, snakes. There are all sorts of things there. Hey, those days were, were, were our playground. Spiders are games. Something that we used to play games. How many remember that? Hello? Yeah. We go and catch spider and put them in the matchboxes, right? Yeah. And then we, we bet on each other and say, if my spider wins, I'll take your spider. Kind of thing. And we put them in the matchbox and see them fight, right? Today, they see spider, they run for life. You know, raising kids today can be very burdensome. How can we help one another's wife? You know, sometimes you, we have to learn to tell ourselves this one thing. To survive on the face of this earth, we need to take note of some things in life. We need to learn to rise up to the situation and be the man of the hour. Don't push. It's so easy to push blame to somebody else. You know, we may get help in life in certain ways and certain areas, but there are some things that we have to do it ourselves. We have to do it ourselves. How many of you know of Thomas Edison? Come on, leave your hand. Thomas Edison was probably one of the greatest inventors in America, American history. 
When he first attended a school in Port Huron, Michigan, his teacher complained that he was too slow. He said, you just do not have a future. You're just too slow in learning. Everything you do is slow. Yet, during Thomas Edison's lifetime, he produced more than 1,300 inventions. He said that his energy and genius was 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. He tried out. He worked hard on it. He again and again and again. He said, you know what? Though the world may look down on me, though I may have problems, my failures upon failures, you know what? I'm not going to give in. Because I have a God within me. He has given me the ability. He has infused within me the strength and the ability to succeed. The Bible says God empowers to succeed, to prosper. Don't let people look down on you. Don't say, ah, Pastor, I'm just, how are you? Okay, la, so so la. What's so so? So so in Cantonese is not so good. You know, so so in Cantonese, right? It stings. You must tell yourself, I'm not so so. I'm good in the Lord. I'm great in the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Church, sometimes we have to ignore the pain and the hurt and the negative feelings in our lives to bear our own burdens. We have to rise above our pain. We have to rise above our hurt. We have to rise above the negative feelings and the failure and disappointment in life so that we can bear our burden. We can rise up. You know why it's important to take note of this? Because Psalms 139 verse 14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. God fearfully made you to be the best of your ability that God can give unto you. And you are wonderful in the eyes of God. You are not a failure. You are not a victim. You are not a good for nothing. You are not a hopeless person. You are not someone who says, I cannot. You are someone that God says, you can. Cannot be your own strength alone. You can do it with Christ's help. Amen? Tell the person next to you, you can. You are able. Yeah. Don't let people look down on you. Don't let the devil criticize you. Don't let people around you criticize you. You say, you know what? Though I fail, I will rise again. Though I fail, I will rise again. Though I fail, I will rise again. Amen? I happen to believe this. One, we are a lot stronger than we think we are. Hello. Number two, we are the wonderful creation of God. Look at the mirror. Did God create something abnormal? No. The only people that are abnormal are those who criticize you. Everybody say, Oi. <laughs> Everybody say, Yeah. yeah. People who criticize you are the most abnormal people on the face of this earth. We are the wonderful creation of God. Number three, we can do more than we think we can. We can do more than we think we can. Number four, we can endure more than we think we can. No matter how tough, how burdensome, how difficult it is, we can endure through, we can overcome, we can rise above. Lastly, we can bear our own burdens. Amen? We have help in between. When God made and every created every one of us, He wired into our human system, our body system, the ability to rise. The ability to rise. Let me share with you a, a story I read recently. In 1999, a 27-year-old, Lance Armstrong, Armstrong did something nearly impossible. He won the cycling world's most famous event. The three weeks, 2,700 miles Tour de France race. 
That's about that's two thousand seven hundred miles on a bicycle. But what makes his win even more impressive is the fact that he did it after three years bout with cancer. In nineteen ninety six, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer by autumn. He was not racing his bike. He was trying to survive his cancer, which has spread to his abdomen, his lungs, and his brain. He had two cooperations, including brain surgery. He endured 12 weeks of chemotherapy. With such a burden, who could believe he would ever compete again? Well, he did. You know what he did? Lance Armstrong believed in something either in himself or someone else. So he rode 30 to 50 miles every day between chemotherapy treatments. He did it. He did everything he could to regain his strength, his health, and with the idea of becoming a winning cyclist again. And he did. And did he ever succeed? He did. He said, you know what? I'm not going to give in. People can help me. My God also can help me. But you know what? I'm not going to give up on myself. I'm going to rise. I'm going to be a victor. I'm going to run again. I'm going to be a, a cyclist again. I'm going to win again. I'm going to join competition again. He won again. Nike, Night Shoe Company, has run a series of ads making the point that Lance Armstrong is the first date man to win the Tour de France. Church, Lance Armstrong bore his own burden. He will not sit there and die and say, ah, whatever it will be, let me die, let me die, let me die, let me die. Have you ever sing of a song, let me die, I will die. Always will die. Have you ever heard a song like that? No one wrote a song. Have you ever written a song as such, isn't it? All songs about hope, all songs about success, of prosperity, of the goodness of God, of what God can do. Hello? And I can tell you, no matter who the songwriter is, if you write a dying song, nobody will buy. <laughs> Correct or not? Yeah. Kendrick, don't ever write a song like that. Okay, if you do, sing it to your wife for a month and let us know what happened first. Help from within. You must rise up. You must rise up. Number two, help from without. From without, from outside of you. Galatians 6, 2 say, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Many years ago, there was a pastor by the name Henry Ward Beecher went to the pulpit to preach and found a letter containing, containing on, his, on the pulpit containing, containing one word. You know what's the word? F-O-O-L. Everybody said the word. What is that? Fool. I did not say you say, huh? He calmly, quietly announced the contents of the letter to the congregation, saying, I've known of people writing a letter and forgetting to sign their name to it, but this is the first time I ever, I've ever seen someone sign his name and forgot to write the letter. <laughs> Christians should be in the business of helping one another. So far, I have not found anything on my on the pulpit yet. I hope not, okay? Hello? Don't do that, huh? Don't be so cruel to your pastor, can not? Hello? Tell the person, actually, don't be cruel. All right. Christians should be in the business of helping one another, bearing one another's burden, not creating more burdens. Everybody said not creating more burdens. Yeah, we should bearing one another's burden. We should be helping one another, not creating more burden. But some Christians are more critical than they are caring. Whether you like it or not, it's true. Some Christians are more critical than they are caring for people. They are more of a hindrance than a help. Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brothers and sisters, 
If someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should what? Restore that person gently. He is not saying that you don't correct the person. He is not saying that you don't rebuke the person. He is saying don't criticize. Don't press the person down. Lift the person up. Help the person after you tell the person of his mistake or failure in life. Everybody makes mistakes in life. All agree? Some appear to be more serious than others, their mistakes. But the point is this. When a fellow Christian makes a mistake, is found in a sin, is found having bad attitude, a, 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 or very critical kind of thing, how do we respond to them or how do we feel about them? All some people do is only criticize. Gossip about them. They don't try to cure the cancer. They just spread the disease. Don't you think so? They don't cure the cancer. They don't speak to the person. They don't tell the person. They don't talk to the person. They don't help the person. They just spread the disease around. Church, listen for a while. God didn't put us here on earth to criticize people. He puts us here to love people. One more time. God didn't put us here to criticize people. He puts us here to love people. We all fail somehow or another. We are all guilty. We are guilty of sin. None of us have the right to criticize others, condemn others, and judge others. We are here to help one another. You know, some people, even though they try to help themselves, they still need external help. They need one another's help. You know, to, to live victoriously, we do need one another. I don't know about you. I need you to help me to live victoriously, to live well in my life, to serve well, to lead well. You know, we are not here to criticize, to condemn, or to judge others. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verses 11 to 12, brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or a sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and one judge. Just one. The one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Who are you to judge your neighbor? The Bible is very strong isn't it, in this. You know, someone fail, they need help, not criticism. Someone fall into a sin, they need help, not condemnation. Someone make a mistake in life, they need help, they need encouragement, they need strength. Not talking down, talking bad, and spreading rumors about them. But rather ask yourself, how can we help them? We, we, we not only need to learn to live victoriously, we need people to help one another, to assist one another to live victoriously as well as Christians. I don't know about you, but I need help in my life. I need help in my life. We all do need help in our life. 1 John 4, verses 7 to 9, tells us that God is love. Let's read this together. 2 and 3. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. Hallelujah. Why should we live through Him? So that we can shine for Him. So that we can be like Him to our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Instead of judging one another, criticizing one another, we should be in the business. What businesses? Number one, blessing business. Bless one another. Restoring business. Restore one another who has fallen. Amen? Yeah. We make a mistake. Tell us we make a mistake. He make a mistake, tell him he make a mistake. If she make a mistake, tell him his attitude stings. But restore him. We are in the blessing business, in the restoring business, we are in the healing business. Bring people back to the Lord, encourage people, strengthen people, give a kind word and a good word. 
How many of you know tearing down, tearing down, tearing down, criticizing, criticizing, judging, 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 all the time gossiping, 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 never can never bring healing. It brings destructions, it brings dist- a division, and it can destroy. We should be in the forgiving business. Learn to forgive. You know why? At the end of the day, we are serving forgiveness, isn't it? Hello? Yeah, learn to forgive people because at the end of the day, we do need forgiveness. And the next thing, burden bearing business. Lend a shoulder to someone who struggle. Lend a shoulder to someone who struggle. Galatians 6 2 says, Carry each other's burden, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Sometimes some people just can't see. You know, I've been in meeting and, 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 and there's some people just say, oh, you know, you must burn it away, burn it away. I don't want to fight. Okay, we try it this way. At the end of the day, say, oh, you know, I realize it's not, it's not so good. Never mind. Let him knock his head or her head on the wall and let them rise up again. Help them. You know, see, I told you, but never, never mind. He said, let's stand again. Let's rise up again. Let's do it better again. We need one another. How can we bear one another's burden? How can we help people to survive the problems of this life? Hmm? How can we bear one another's burdens? How can we help one another to survive the problems, the problems of this life? Matthew 5, 7 is the answer. It says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Be merciful. Be gracious. Be kind. It does not mean that you don't correct. It doesn't mean that you don't rebuke. It doesn't mean that you don't uh, uh, meet, tell the person, sit on the face and say to him what he has done wrong. But nevertheless, we can rise again. We can help you. We can do again in life. You know, we can demonstrate mercy towards them. How? Not by gossiping about them. Not by talking about them but talking to God for them. Not talking about them to God, but talking to God for them. Say, God, you know what? Kendrick Kong, you know, he laughs so loud, he sings so loud, he claps his hand until so red, you know. Uh, and, and, uh, but say, God, thank God for him. He's energetic. He is cheerful. Thank God the ceiling is quite tall. If not, when he jumps, he will touch the ceiling and puncture a hole in between. We have to repair every time when the song leaves. <laughs> but I say, God, you know what? I pray for him that you will use him greater. He will exercise certain self-control. Hallelujah. He will continue to be joyful. He will, but yet, keep him excited in what God is doing in him and through him. Are you with me or not? Don't talk against the person to God, but talk to God for them. That God will use them. You know, that's the demonstration of mercy. We need to do more of it. People are hurting. They need our mercy. They need our support. They need our help. They need our understanding. They need our encouragement. They need our grace. They need our prayer. That's why in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 14 says, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and destructive. He said, warn them what? Did he say that or not? Did Paul say that not? Warn them? He said, warn them. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Warn them. Be patient with them. Help them again and again and again and again and again. Amen. We need help. We need to do for our own self. If we cannot, we need help from outside to help us to walk and live victoriously. Amen. Amen. Every time we have an opportunity to do good. You know why? Paul told the church in Galatia. He said this, Galatians 6 verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, everybody say opportunity. We all do have opportunity, correct? It's just that we all abuse the opportunity. Let us do good. Everybody said do good. Do good. To who? To all people. 
Who are the good? All people, the good one, the irritant one. They are from the irritites. Never mind. Alright? And uh, uh, who are these people? The easily angered one, the jealous one, isn't it? The rude one, the crude one. As well as the kind and the loving and the gentle one. All people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Who are there? Everybody say we. Uh, all of us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Lastly, close early for you. Help from above. Help from above. Psalms 55 verse 22, it says, Cast your cares or burdens on the Lord and He will sustain you. Hallelujah. It says, Cast your cares or your burdens on the Lord and He will sustain you. The Bible says, if you try with all your help, you do all you can do. You also need outside people to help you, one another to help us. And then at the same time, we need God's help. We also need God's help in every one of our lives. We can't change on our own many a time. We can't change people. We need God to change us. We need God to make a miracle and change our circumstances, our situation in life. Amen? Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He said, come to me. You know, so many times uh, we, we think that we are learning, we think that we are experienced, we think that we have eaten salt more than many people eat rice. We think that we are the experienced one, we don't need God. Every one of us need God. We can try with all our help and all our ability, but at the end of the day, we still have to tell ourselves we need God's help as well. Yeah. We need God's help as well. He said, come to me. He said, come to, he invite you and I to come to him with our needs, with our struggles, with our bondages, with our cares. He said, you come to me, I will help you. If people can't help you, if people are unable to help you in your circumstances and situation in life, I can help you. Come to me, he says. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 says, Cast all your cares and anxiety on him because he cares for you. He does care for you. And I say, cast it to me. Learn to surrender to me. Don't hold on to it so dearly. A person may not be able to help themselves or other human help. Uh, 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 other human beings' help may be good. But that is not enough. But when we, then we must turn to the Lord also for help to ask God for mercy and ask God for grace in our life. You know, Abraham Lincoln once said, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go but to come to God. I have nowhere else to go but I come to God. Have you been there? How many of you have been there? Come on. How many of you been there? I've been there so many times. I do not know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Most of us have. I say, God, only you. Why should we come to God? Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews 4 verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. And yet, he did not sin. If there is one person who knows how we feel, how we hurt, it is our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? He understood us fully well and he longs to help us, give us grace for our burdens. Let me close with this and then with the scripture. A boy and his father was hiking together on a familiar path. 
As they make a sharp turn in a narrow section of the path, they came across a big rock blocking their path. The little boy asked his father, Dad, do you think I can move it? His dad said, Why? Why? Of course, if you use all your strength, I'm sure you can move it. The little boy chose an anger of attack on the big rock and began to push with everything he had. He grunted, he groaned, he yelled. Some morning, all his strength he had, all the strength he had, he pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, but to no avail. Finally, in desperation, he said, You were wrong, Dad. I just can't do it. His dad looked him in the eye and smiled and said, No, my son, you haven't used all your strength yet. I'm right here, and you haven't asked me to help you. No, my son, you haven't used all your strength yet. I'm right here, and you haven't asked me to help you. How many times in our life we are like that? We hard, we work, we work, we work, we slog, we slog, we struggle, but we have never come to God who is our strength and ask Him to help us. Matthew 7, 11 says, let's read together. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? Amen. Amen. You know why sometimes we struggle in life and not able to have victory? Because we have never asked of God. We have tried with all our ability and our wisdom and our experiences, all our education. Even have people coming to help us, assisting us, we still fail, we still can't. You know, God say, you know what? You have not exhausted your strength and your ability yet. You have me with you. You have me with you. Come to me. Ashes. Musicians, sorry, not ashes. Will you come? Can ashes? I sorry. Uh, worship leaders. Can I invite you to stand with me? Now?